Hello Wanderers, welcome back to our Crusader Kings 3 roleplay series following Lord Corliss Velaryon, the Lord of the Tides, the Sea Spray himself. And as you can see, chaos has erupted once again in the Seven Kingdoms to nobody's surprise. And that is because Lord Corliss made a foolish mistake in his stubborn and arbitrary nature. He decided that he was above paying back the Iron Bank of Bravos, the coin that he owed to them. And he would, as many kings and lords before him, come to regret that. For he thought he was, you know, uh, unstoppable with having the largest fleet in the world. The, certainly the largest fleet, fleet in Westeros, probably the largest fleet in Essos as well. And so, yeah, he thought he was untouchable, basically. Well, it's a little bit of a different story when the Iron Bank of Bravos can get into the ear of the regent of the Iron Throne, Lord Eddard Snowfire, and the hand of the queen, Darren Tully, and convince them that the power that Corliss has is far too much for any one man. Not only is he the lord of the Narrow Sea, but he's also set to inherit the Reach, the one of the most powerful and wealthiest of all the Seven Kingdoms. Not only that, but his children are set to inherit Old Town, which is one of the greatest cities in the Seven Kingdoms, and he is also the steward of the Iron Islands, far, far too much power for one man. And so the Blacks and the Greys have teamed up against the Blues to defeat us and strip us of our power, our land, our fleet, of pretty much anything, essentially. And so Corliss is in a fight for his life. And it's going to be a difficult fight because if you take a look at this, you'll see that uh, they have twice as many troops. It's 160,000 to our 80,000. This is going to uh, probably be an impossible war, even with the plans and the steps that we are going to take to try to, you know, do our best to win. Because I do intend to try to win this war. It's It started one day ago, so nothing has even happened yet. But I intend to, to try to win this. But I had some people in the comments who were suggesting, you know, that... Maybe I should just reload the save because this is too crazy or, you know, that, uh, you know, what's going to happen if we lose? Well, the, the thing is that uh, this is <laughs> this is something that I take into account when I'm playing these role play series that I don't do when I'm playing single player. When I'm playing single player, I'm usually out there to win. When I'm doing a role play series, I'm out there to tell a cool story. And so there is certainly a cool story to tell. If Lord Corliss can beat back these, you know, crazy odds, that's so many troops, 160,000. We are vastly outnumbered. We do not have the allies. We do not have the numbers. And, you know, if we can pull off a victory, that's going to be a pretty crazy story and a pretty crazy victory for Corliss Sea Spray. Uh, that would certainly that would certainly be very interesting. You know, uh, we'll basically be able to decide what to do with the Iron Throne at that point. Do we want to oust Eddard as regent, send him into exile? Maybe we do, and then maybe we become regent. Or who knows, you know, maybe we would sit on the Iron Throne ourselves. There's a lot of possibilities, and uh, if we win, we will be able to dictate them and, uh, you know, maybe get some revenge on Darren Tully for sleeping with our mom, too. You know, kick him out of the Riverlands. He would deserve it. Uh... So yeah, that's if we win. But what if we lose? And the fact is, we're probably going to lose. Well, look at this. We lose the Lord Paramountcy of the Narrow Sea. We lose Driftmark, High Tide, Silver Horse, Shroud, Black Hole, Braveport, Spice Down, Hull. We lose it all. Those are all of our landed titles. Except for one. The Lordship of Turtleback. Way down here in the Stepstones. If we lose this war, we'll, we're stripped of all these lands. Technically, we'll still hold the Iron Islands, but I think they're going to strip that too. If we lose, pro presumably our mother will be stripped of the Lord Paramount Sea. And it's entirely possible that the High Towers would remove Sherris from Old Town as well, just, you know, because she's already spurned her own family by marrying us and having Valarion set to inherit. So. I wouldn't be surprised if our mother loses everything, if our wife loses everything, and if we lose everything when we lose, and that would be pretty crazy. But it's not a game over. We would still hold this tiny little island 
in the Stepstones. And I ask you, what's going to be the most interesting story? Is it going to be Lord Corliss beating back the crazy odds and defeating the Iron Throne and, you know, becoming regent and dictating, you know, what the, the terms of the peace are? That could be a crazy story. But what about Pyrus? <laughs> what about Corliss, the Pirate King, you know, starting back from nothing, you know, exiled with like whatever part of our fleet we can manage to muster together down into the Stepstones? Maybe we conquer Pirate King Rillo and name ourselves Pirate King of the Stepstones. Conquer Tyrosh and Lys and Mir, take the three sisters, build a power base, and then come back with an army to get a revenge? That sounds like a pretty cool story, too. So the fact is, I don't really care if we win or lose because both of them are going to be awesome. Uh, the fact is, uh, we just have to see what's going to happen. And like I said, I am going to do my best to win. And in order to do that, we need to do a couple things. So uh, we are going to start playing some game now. Uh, that doesn't mean I'm going to start time. It just means I'm going to start playing the game. And part of that is considering where if we can get any other allies. Now, some people were suggesting the Vale in the North. I don't think the North wants anything to do with uh, this war, um, just because it, neither does the Vale, frankly. But can we even potentially get alliances with them? Unfortunately, we can't, because the Vale only has two sons, and uh, so does the North as well. And I've already checked and looked. Uh, so there's no way we can get a legitimate alliance here, unless... We break the, break the betrothal of our daughter to Ellison Tyrell, the grandson of Willis. And we could possibly do that, but in a role play sense, I just don't think we can. I think if we break that betrothal, our mother would lose her very tenuous hold on the reach, and we would lose her we would lose our strongest ally, 18,000 troops. If our mother you know, if we break that betrothal with Willis the Tyrell's grandson, which was to bring peace between the Tyrells to secure the Reach, if we break that betrothal, our mother is going to lose everything. You know, the Reach lords will revolt all those ones who haven't already. And yeah, so we can't break our daughter's betrothal uh, and we can't marry into the Vale or the North with any of our sons. And that kind of makes sense in, for uh, Peter Baelish. The fact is, you know, he could gain a lot by allying with us. He wants to put his children on the in the Riverlands. His children have claims through their mother, Lysa Tully. So they got claims on the Riverlands, and he wants to put them on there, obviously. he's been, But he's been the regent of the Vale for 20 years, since Lord Orwell was five years old. Peter Baelish has been the regent. He's ruled this place, and they haven't gotten into any wars. All of this completely war ravaged the veil vale, it's basically survived untouched this whole time and so you know although peter has much to gain from allying with us because we would probably be able to give his children the riverlands he has a lot to lose as well you know he would look at this he think he knows we're outnumbered he knows that if he loses he's gonna lose everything as well so you know what it's gonna be he would be hard to convince and mechanically we got to get a, a marriage there as well. So the thing is, if Peter Baelish stays neutral and we win, Lord Darren Tully still loses, which means that Peter has a chance to, you know, potentially act against the Tullys when Lord Paramount uh, Darren here loses all his power. So Peter Baelish doesn't necessarily have a good reason to ally with us and help us in this because he could, you know, if we win, he pulls off his plan. And if we lose, he loses nothing. So. It makes sense for him to stay neutral. Maybe we'll be able to win him over. Maybe if our uh, wife has a daughter, we can arrange things with the uh, house R in there and whatnot. But um, yeah, that's uh, that's what it is there. Uh, we do have other potential ally options, though. And those are across the Narrow Sea. The three sisters, you know, there potentially could be some alliances here, maybe with House Roguerre. I mean, I'm pretty sure that the Valarions had some uh, connections with House Rogare in the past. You know, Tyrosh or Mir. But all three of these are in a big war. There's plague going on in their lands. They probably can't help us much. But what about Pentos? And what about our dear friend Tyrion Lannister here? Who I think sends us a, ra a, a raven suggesting that we might be able to arrange a marriage 
or he might be able to arrange a marriage from with the daughter, one of the daughters of the Prince of Pentos with one of our sons. What does Peter or what does uh, Tyrion ask for this in return? Well, you can probably imagine he's going to ask for Casterly Rock, which unfortunately is in the hands of Lord Cedric, the son of Castus Masterly. And <laughs> even worse, Lord Cedric has agreed to assist us in our cause. So if we agree to Tyrion's proposal, we're basically, we have to betray one ally or we have to agree to Tyrion's proposal and then not fulfill our promise and betray another ally. That's a difficult proposition. Do we betray Tyrion or do we betray young Castus Masterly here? I mean, the fact is, <laughs> Pentos is our only strong possible ally. They're in a war, but they're winning it. They've got a big army. And uh, he has daughters we can marry our sons to. So I think we're just going to leave the decision of who we betray till later, but we're going to make the marriage because we just, we need to. I'm going to get the marriage here uh, between this young daughter here. She's sickly, but I'm sure she'll pull through. Uh, and probably our youngest daughter. We need to make it a grand wedding as well, uh, which we don't have the money for, obviously. And uh, we need to do something about that too. And part of that is... Unfortunately, completing our legend, uh, we just, we can't afford it. <laughs> this is costing us too much money. I'd love to continue it, but to increase its quality, we're only at 28 baronies out of 100. There's no way we're getting here in time. We have to complete it. We need to get the, our money back flowing. Otherwise, there's zero chance of us winning this war. So, unfortunately, we have to do it early, and there we go. Here is the end of the book of Lord Monfort and of his noble family, Valarion, whose fame and legitimacy is known across the whole land. And here is the end of a mighty endeavor for Valarion. Monfort's legend culminates in a marvelous adventure. His great deeds of arms were such that all kings had wonder thereof, and many nobles and commoners came to his encounter, for they wished to see the legend in the flesh. And here it is written, Castle Driftmark, 24th of Twelfth Moon. AC 328, the old, the true, the brave. So the legend is complete, which is good. I mean, we gain some small bonuses from it, which is which is nice. Um, we could have got more, but the, we just, we can't afford it. We're barely, we're not even going to be making enough money to support the armies that we're about to raise here. So uh, yeah, we'll get this alliance with the Prince of Pentos here. Did we arrange it? We did, right? Uh, oh yeah, okay. We're calling in our allies. Did I not, uh, did I not agree? I thought I set this up. Maybe I didn't. Gonna let another moment pass here. There we go, yeah, I did, okay. It was just taking a little while. I also look forward to the promised grand wedding. Yeah, yeah, okay, whatever. To help us win this war first. Otherwise, there ain't gonna be no grand wedding. Uh, call our allies to war. Our <laughs> Prince Agreo the Wicked. Let's call him the war. Also, our wife is pregnant. If she has a daughter, potentially we could get that R in alliance, which would be pretty helpful. Oof. All right. Things are going to be difficult. I think we're going to lose some allies right away here because they just got completely caught out in the middle of nowhere there. I think we're going to hold on Driftmark for just a little while. Oh, actually, you know what? Maybe we're going to go and crush this tiny little army while we can. She is a woman now. It has been a good while since I saw my old heartthrob, Daenera. Um, it's hard to believe she's the same girl I fought over in my youth. Do we confess our love? Set aside these childish thoughts? We are arbitrary, but our wife is our soulmate. I'm just going to randomly pick here. I got my eyes closed and... Oh, okay. I guess we confess our love to her. That's a uh, That's me doing our arbitrary nature oh she whispers around back guess we're gonna have some bastard children <laughs> oh well uh what are we gonna go through here um probably we don't even know she's sick i'm guessing too maybe she's gonna get us sick that will be unfortunate i think we gotta go for golden obligations because i want to get war profits here and then maybe fearful troops it seems like the best Best options here. So let's see if we can take down. No, okay, they flee. We're gonna have to. Let's get back onto Driftmark here. 
and I guess gather up all of our allies. Let's hope that they all come here onto Driftmark and and we can gather up a big enough force to put Oh no, the crap. The Reachman army, of course, is getting caught out there. And they, oh yeah, look at that. Oh boy. All right, goodbye Reach army. Okay, uh, at least our wife's army's here. All right, we're, I guess we're, I guess our goal is to hold Driftmark because <laughs> all of our allies are here. We got to put ourselves in, I guess we put Evatho in charge of the army or do we lead it? No, we should probably put it in the hands of Evatho here. All right, what are they get? Oh, they're just sieging down over here. I think we, j I think we wait just a little bit longer. Okay, our son, our son's okay, he's recovered. I think we wait a little bit longer. Reach army, get out of there. You're just gonna get crushed again, stop it. Oh, they're so dumb. Ugh, can we afford this? No, we can't, we can't afford. <laughs> uh, small disease recovery, you lose 20. Is 21 really going to make a difference? I don't know. Probably not. All right. I guess we'll pay for the recovery. Man, this is not ideal. I'm just... So basically my plan here, although we do... We are... Oh, God. And that, yeah, look at that. My plan is that, like, maybe... Maybe we could try to take King's Landing. Probably the only shot. The thing is, we have the biggest fleet, right? But we do not have the ground forces, and we can't just let, like, our mother's lands be conquered, our wife's lands be conquered. So my hope is that either they win these couple sieges here, and they come siege down Driftmark, and we use our fleet and our island to our advantage and defeat them there, or we let them move on a little bit, and then we try to siege down King's Landing. Um... There's definite need for a new road to traverse the Lord of High Tide. Uh, the project begins. My steward will handle this. The roads. I'm going to need to pay money for this, aren't I? Ah, and the Reach Army is just so dumb. All right, I mean... Do we go for King's Landing? Let's see, where are they? They're just sieging this down. Maybe we try... I don't know. Maybe we try to go for King's Landing here. Oh, no. They're going on the sea. All right. Maybe we go back. Oh, hey. We gained money. Okay. Looks like all the armies are, are coming back here. They're landing in high tide. Oh, man. There's a big force. The Battle of High Tide. <laughs> Oh, and we have a son here, Agor, Desmond, Ben, Lyman, Willis, Roberts, Darren. I like Darren. All right, I know there's probably some of you guys saying like, oh, you know, if you wouldn't have left, you wouldn't have had that disembarking bonus. Look at this. A hundred thousand troops versus our not a hundred thousand. There, there was an 84 knights versus our 31 knights. It doesn't matter if we have the disembarking penalty. There's no way we win this battle. Is, is there? What? No. I don't know why it showed us as having the potential to win there. There's absolutely no way we're doing that. Post guards along the roads. Um, control's going to go down in high tide anyways after all this. Yeah, it's, no, there's there's just no way. We didn't have the troops to win this fight. Oh no, they were in sick. We just didn't have the troops. The fact is, guys, it was a miracle that we would ever win this war. And sure, we could have tried to race them. Ooh, Lucerius died? Huh. Well, all right, let's take a look at that crazy battle. Captain uh, events. Yeah, that's what we want to see. 
Oof. Oh man, Samuel the Slain. <laughs> Samuel the Watchful Shepherd slew a Seuss. Damn, Sam. Kind of a badass. Oh, we lost our cousin, Lord Maylor the Black Seahorse. Lord Julian Stoneheart, Benjamin Breaknell. Uh, Albin Massey, <laughs> Captain Lucerus, Lord DeCello, Lord Gorman, Adam was slain, Everett Orlin. Oh, yeah, lots. That was lots slain. The fact is, guys, and I know there's probably lots of people kind of saying, like, you know, surely our fleet could have done, you know, something about that. Like, I don't know, maybe they use dragon fire or, or not dragon fire. Yeah, the uh, wildfire. You know, maybe there was like some sort of plot or trick or something like that. Somehow they broke broke through the fleet. They got their armies landed. You know, they destroyed part of our fleet. The fact is, there's no naval combat in this game. And I'm not going to, you know, I'm not just going to completely game the mechanics just so we can have a victory. The fact is, we were never going to win this war, you guys. Or it was highly unlikely at the very least. I mean, maybe we can try to go for King's Landing now. And then hope for the best here, but uh, I mean, I don't know. Who knows? Maybe we maybe we pull it off. We're not at a hundred percent war score yet, and uh, you know it's not over till the fat lady sings. So that's what we're gonna try to do. Uh, that's just a marriage from one of our sister to our vassals. Long prearranged. All right, come on, allies. Oh no, pirate crew invasion of the stepstones. Uh, we can't. That's not good, guys. Because we can't lose the Stepstones. Because that's where we need to flee to if we lose this war. Oh, no, we can't. Uh-oh. All right, guys, I think this is the moment, really. I think that this is the moment. You know, Corliss, he had, you know, he suffered the defeat. His island is... Basically, you know, it's under siege. He lost a bunch of his ships towards whatever, you know, plans that uh, his enemies had laid. Somehow they figured out a way to get their army landed on Driftmark. And, uh, you know, the island's basically in their hands now. We could try to siege down King's Landing in a desperate attempt to find victory here. But they have, they just have a vast army. If we can't break into the keep before they come back for us. We essentially lose and and if we lose that you know we lose everything and so i think and knowing this seeing this i think we don't really have much other choice than to oh i don't like doing this but i i was trying i was uh, hoping to win that war and yeah there might have been ways that we could do that I'm sure some of you guys who are really great at this game might have been able to pull off that victory, but that was never going to be easy. No matter how many allies we had. Well, you know, if we had the Vale and the North, you know, with us somehow, maybe, but we, uh, unfortunately, that was not possible. And so the fact is, <laughs> why would they want to side with Corliss rather than Eddard and Darren Tully? You know, why Why go with the the man who broke betrothals and, you know, he might be a hero, but he wasn't in power. So. Uh, I think we just need to go and uh, I think this is us. We're taking our ships. We're taking what remains of our fleet. And we are going to sail down into the step zones. Uh, and, the you know, that's going to be... Uh, that is going to be, I suppose, where where we flee to now because we lost our island. Yeah, there's not... I don't think there's all that much we can do here. We still need to defeat these pirates, which is not actually necessarily going to be easy here. I hope some of our allies come, and come over here. Just going to continue through this road thing. All right, yeah, it looks like our allies are dropping in, which is perfect. I'm just going to let... Oh, okay, you're moving. Let's, uh, you know what, let's try to catch them here because... Uh... Oh, okay, where are they going? 
Can we catch them in time? Oh, we're going against some of them anyways. All right, defeating this small pirate army. Corliss, uh, let's get Corliss over here so he can, he can do some of this fighting. All right, where are they landing? Are they gonna land up here or are they gonna land in Dwarfstone? Landing in the dwarf cell. Let's see if we can hit him. Hit him here. Come on, let's catch him. It's not worth the effort. Unfortunate, but necessary. We can't afford to lose the money. It's not worth the effort. All right, we got to defeat these pirates because, yeah, they're uh, this war. This war is a lost cause, I think. I'll, I'll put the save file up. If some of you guys can beat this war without cheating or gaming the system or anything like that um i'd be happy to see it honestly and probably there are ways to do it but um you know i think it would be pretty difficult oh man 160,000 troops against us that was that was never gonna be easy at least we can kill these pirates corliss can get his get his uh, bl uh blade wet on the blood of some pirates here there we go. And so it is done. I mean, we defeated the pirates. But I think the fact is... We, uh... I don't think we can win this war. I don't... Look at this, you guys. I don't think we can win 40,000 versus 150,000. That's too much, I think. That we need uh, to to unfortunately surrender here. So be it, and we will also uh, enforce our demands upon the pirate crew here. He loses five hundred. We don't gain any, so uh, because this is bugged out. I'm actually probably going to give us an extra five hundred between episodes because this guy has, you know, five. 500 coins, 473, and it it implies that he should be paying this money to us, but it doesn't, so enforce our demands. At least we found victory. At least we have a place, you know, we have our refuge. Oh, as punishment for my crime of treason, she has decreed that. Oh, she showed mercy. I think that's more of just... I think that's more of just uh, her basically... I mean, we went into exile. Um, presumably what I'm going to do is make us independent of the Iron Throne. So what we can imagine here, you know, Corliss loses Driftmark. You know, the our mother's lands are, you know, uh, basically are, you know, they're, they're vulnerable. They're probably going to go under siege. You know, our wife's lands as well. And we take everything, we take our family, and we flee to the Stepstones. The, because it's the only place we can go. You know, we have some of the remains of the Var Valarian fleet. That's probably going to make us a pretty powerful pirate, or, you know, pretty powerful lord of the Stepstones. We'll see how, pirate, how, pir how piratical we become. But, yeah, I think that we are going to be basically starting from scratch here and i'm excited for it honestly coreless pirate king that's gonna be pretty cool so we will see how this all plays out in the next episode i hope you enjoyed this one i know there's gonna be some contentious comments uh about the way that this all played out but i think that this is gonna be awesome coreless the pirate king potentially you know conquering tyrosh and Lys and Mir and who knows what else, you know, going back, sailing back to get our revenge. Could happen. We shall see. But we shall see it in the next episode. So until then, Wanderers, thank you for watching.